Okay, so for today's RetroArch setup, I'm going to be showing you how to pimp out RetroArch from this really boring look into something a little bit more personalized. So I'm going to show you how to add wallpaper into this, how to add effects like I've got just here with the snow, even some background music, and how to change your icons. So if you really truly want to pimp out RetroArch from that boring old look, then check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, before I start tonight's Retro Arch Guide and actually pimping it out, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss any of my upcoming retro emulation content. It helps my channel out a great deal, plus it gets you emulation content as I release it one to three times a day sometimes. So we're looking at pimping out Retro Arch and for this I've just downloaded a fresh portable version of the latest Retro Arch. If you've missed the new Retro Arch setup guide I did, check that one out which I uploaded just over a week ago. So this is going to be applicable for those out there who's installed Retro Arch through the conventional way of installing it to your hard drive. But I'm just using a portable version for this. And let me also make you aware that I'm using a Windows 11 computer. If you're using Retro Arch, or anything else such as a Nintendo Wii, a PSP, a PlayStation 3, then this guide might actually be a little bit different to your actual RetroArch setup. So what we're going to do is go to RetroArch first and I'm going to open up RetroArch for the first time. And it's for this sort of reason that we need to pimp this out. It's boring and yeah, it's just very boring. So the first thing I'm gonna suggest doing is to actually change the theme of this. And to do this, what we're gonna do is just use cursor keys on the keyboard or your controller, whatever you're using. Go down to settings. And if we just go down to drivers, we're gonna change menu to XMB. And that's gonna make things look a lot better than the boring old ozone. So XMB. Then if we come back out and out again, now I'm using the X key on my keyboard to back out of these options. If you're on the standard controller, then it's more likely going to be your B button to back out. To go into these options, I'm pressing Z or Z. So next thing I'm going to do is just make sure to save the theme I've just set. So configuration file, save current configuration. And then in order to apply this theme, which is XMB, if I just then go to restart. And here we go. So we got more or less like a PlayStation 3 XMB theme going on there with the wave going on in the background. But we can pimp this out a lot more than this. So what I'm going to do is just close out of RetroArch. So just go down to quit. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm using Google Chrome and I'm going to image search. So I'm going to be using Katy Perry this sample for this and I'm a big Katy Perry fan. So we're going to look for an image which matches my screen I'm using. So it's going to be 1080p. So what we need to do is look for any image you want. What I've done here is as you can see just typed in Katy Perry wallpaper and that's likely going to return you matches with the biggest Katy Perry images on say Google images. So if I just choose a picture which I might want as my background. So I'm gonna look at this one just here, a new album wallpaper. And if I just hover over this, I'll see just here, it says 1920 by 1080, which means this is 1080p. If I right click on the image, save image as, and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. But before I actually save, I'm gonna just delete the title, the file name rather of this. And I'm gonna just call it Katy Perry. So I'm going to save that to my desktop and to add a little bit of variation, I'm going to search for another wallpaper. So this time around, I'm going to search for retro wallpaper, see what comes up. And of course, again, I need to be looking for something along the lines of 1080p. So retro neon wallpaper, say for example. So let's just take a look at this one. So I'm sure we can actually use this one. If I go to save image as and desktop and I'm going to just change the file name of this to just sunset. 
Now, PNG should work. That's .png image files. So save this image. So I've now got two background images and I've renamed them. And going back to my RetroArch folder, I'm going to go to Assets and Wallpapers. And I'm going to drag both of these inside of this Wallpapers folder. If you are using RetroArch through installed methods, then just go into your directory where you install it to and you'll find your Assets folder in there. So I'm going to open up RetroArch again. And what I'm going to do is actually apply one of those images as my background. So if I just go over to settings, which is a cogs at the top, I'm going to select user interface and just go down to the fourth option, which is appearance and press set to enter. And I'm going to go down to background image. And from here, I'm going to find my wallpapers folder. And first up, I'm going to just go and set my Katy Perry. So there's also a preview image of it here. And here we go. And if I go back and say set sunset as a background, we've now got this one. But personally, I prefer Katie. So other things we can do with this is actually put some effects on it. So if we go up to shader pipeline, which is currently off, we can actually put the original rhythm. And if you notice now, that PlayStation 3, PS3 wave is going through. Uh, we can go to ribbon simplified snow and so on and to make this better we can actually go down to background opacity and we can actually increase or decrease the brightness of the image in the background whilst at the same time the fonts are not losing any color they're actually staying the same so personally i oddly like the snow effect i'm not sure why but background opacity and you can really turn this bright and if you're using an OLED screen like I am it is very very bright or we can actually take away the background if you just set it to 0 0.000 and right at the top we got scale factor and if I press left or right we can actually change the scale of the fonts so that's up to you to mess around with personally I think it looks fine at 1.00 times and then we also got shadow effects. If I disable this, you'll notice the shadow behind the font will disappear. And to go down a couple to icon theme, this is currently set to monochrome. We got different icon styles here. So for example, if I go down to something like retro system and to apply the icon theme, I need to come out by pressing X, X again. And I'm going to go to configuration file and save current configuration. In order for this to apply, we need to restart RetroArch. And before I restart it, just take note of the icons. And as you can see, as I've restarted it, the icons have now got hexagon shapes. So there's lots under that icons to take a look at. And if we scroll down a little bit further, you're going to find font. And under font, you're going to find a folder. This is PKG. If we go inside here, you've got a few different fonts to play around with. So if I choose, say, for example, Chinese fallback font, if I select this, and I go to configuration file just to make sure those settings have applied, and just restart it again. And something else we can do to add a little bit more personality to RetroWatch is if we go back to the settings cogs at the top, if we go down to audio, and remember I'm pressing Z to go into these, I'm going to go down to menu sounds, mixer on, and just enable each one of these. And if I come back out by pressing X, Now, as you can hear, we now got background music. Now we can actually change the background music, which I'm going to show you how to do in a minute. But under settings, we've also got 
colors for fonts. So if I just mess around with the green, blue, and red, then we can actually change the color of our fonts too to give it a bit more uh, personality for, like I say, what it is you're trying to achieve. So font colors, they can be a little bit irritating to get the correct color you want as there's three options here. And like I say, when you apply these settings, just make sure to go to configuration file and save. So I'm gonna quit out of RetroArch for now. And in order to change your background music, you'll need to go back into your assets folder. And in here you'll find sounds. Now the background music that I had playing just now was BGM. And that's the top one just here. This is BGM.OGG. If you delete this and then find a music file you want, but it needs to be in .ogg, rename that music file to bgm.ogg, so it's spelled exactly the same as this. And then when you apply that back in RetroArch, you'll have whatever music you want playing. So that's it for today's Pimping Out RetroArch setup guide. So there's more to RetroArch and Pimping It Out that I've done today, but I'll do that eventually. But anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And also check out my full comprehensive RetroWatch setup guide for the latest version which I released around a week ago. Until next time, stay retro.